Hi, good morning. We are reading The Mystery of History, Volume 4. We're on page 15. <clears throat> We're also playing with some Legos, so you might hear some Legos in the background. Um, we were on the 13 colonies, and I think we had already gone over South Carolina. Um, and yes, we did, because I remember reading about Charlestown. And now we're looking at Pennsylvania. Did we do Pennsylvania? Don't think we did. All right. Pennsylvania. Uh, let's see. William Penn, who was a devout Quaker, was granted the colony in 1681. It was the King of England who gave it to William Penn as a payment for a debt that was owed to William Penn's father. Penn laid out the city of quote-unquote brotherly love when he built Philadelphia in 1682. Are you building your ship, Caleb? Yeah. Okay. Um, and he welcomed people from all walks of life. That means any and everybody. He also kept peace with the American Indians, and we read about him in Volume 3. So, I only have one more colony to, to, to discuss, and that would be Georgia. The last of the 13 colonies was made official in 1732. This was when King George II grant. Oh, I didn't know that there was a King George II. That means that there's a Prince George now, so he'd be King George III. Um... It was made official in 1732 when King George II was granted granted the land to James Oglethorpe. Huh. He was an English general. Oglethorpe. Does that remind you of anything? We. Oh, uh, yeah. Oglethorpe Street. That's near us. In fact, that's where... Yep. Yeah, it's a street near us. Um, out of respect, Oglethorpe named the land Georgia after the King of England. And we also know a Georgia, our baby cousin... Oglethorpe is so adorable. Oglethorpe says she says he was a kindly general. He freed debtors from English prisons to help him settle Savannah. So that means he had to pay the debt. So he paid the debt to get them out. That's a good way to win people to Christ. I wonder if he was a Christian. I, he was also kind to American Indians and purchased land from them. But Oglethorpe would eventually rely on his military skills to hold on to Georgia. Why? Because of the Spanish. I did not know this. The Span oh, I did know this part. The Spanish tried to colonize Florida, which borders Georgia. I remember that too. In fact, England and Spain would fight a great deal over the city of St. Augustine on the eastern coast of Florida. Oglethorpe failed to acquire St. Augustine, but he kept the Spanish out of Georgia, which remained an English colony. Let me read that again. He failed to acquire... Oh, so he kept them out of Georgia, but didn't get St. Augustine. Okay. Now, with all that information, I'll wrap up this lesson with some simple organizing. We'll look down at the table... It's easiest to remember the colonies if you group them by three locations. The northern colonies, which are usually called New England, the middle colonies, and the southern colonies. From north to south, the northern colonies of England include Massachusetts, which is also includes present-day Maine, New Hampshire, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. The middle colonies were New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. And the southern colonies were Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. Like seed scattered on rich soil, each colony grew to have its own distinct culture. While some were planned for economic reasons, that means for um, money to uh, grow like businesses and trading and that has to do with economics. Others were started for religious and political reasons. Blending handed down recipes, crafts, games, and dialects. With new natural resources around them, each colony had its own flavor, meaning they all had their own little culture because they had different people in the colonies, different peoples, different cultures. 
However, as many of you already know, the 13 colonies would not remain that distinct. Within 44 years, they would unite under one name and one government. But that's another long story, and we have several more lessons to look at before delving into the founding of the United States. Okay, so let's just review the northern colonies. There was Massachusetts, which included Maine, founded by the Pilgrims in 1620. New Hampshire, founded by English settlers. They were recruited by Sir Fernando Georges and Captain John Mason and John Wheelwright in 1622. Then Connecticut by the Dutch and Thomas Hooker in 1636. Rhode Island by Roger Williams and Anne Hutchinson in 1636 also. Then there are the middle colonies. New York, founded by Peter Minuit for the Dutch. Charles II of England, who named the colony after his brother, the Duke of York in 1626. Then Pennsylvania by William Penn in 1682. New Jersey, which was called New Netherlands, by the Dutch, Lord John Berkeley, Sir George Carteret, and the settlers under Philip Carteret in 1664. Then Delaware, founded by the Dutch, Peter Minuit for Sweden, and the English in 1638. Then we have the Southern Colonies. Maryland, founded by George Calvert, who was the first Baron Baltimore, and his sons Cecil and Leonard Calvert, in 1634. Virginia with Jamestown, founded by the Virginia Company of London under Captain John Smith in 1607. North Carolina and the colonists from Virginia in 1653. South Carolina, founded by Charles II and the Lord's Proprietor, which were eight nobles, and the settlers recruited by them in 1670. And finally, Georgia, in 1732, founded by James Oglethorpe under George II of England. Okay, so we're going to stop there. Tomorrow we're going to be looking at the Great Awakening under Jonathan Edwards and George Whitfield. I'm excited to learn about them because these are people that I did not learn about in the public school. And to see how what other things are woven into this story. Because when you're... Usually you learn about the 13 colonies only and you don't learn about what else is going on kind of at the same time in history so this is good to know all right thanks for joining us uh we will pick back up tomorrow bye